Hello, I'm the Glyph from GTB Labs here on behalf of the Artisan Alliance. Today I'd like to address a commonly asked question. How do you cast multi-shot keycaps? There really is no right answer to this question because there's endless different techniques and endless ways to do each one of them. That being said, I'm still going to try to be at least a little helpful by walking you through some of the techniques I use in my own casting. We could walk through each of these academically, but I thought it'd be way more fun if we just cast some actual keycaps. A couple notes before we start casting. This video assumes you already understand the basics of resin casting using two-part silicone molds. It's okay if you don't, but I encourage you to check out some other Artisan Alliance videos to get yourself up to speed. Next, I will be using one of my GTB 4x4 mold systems for this cast, but these techniques should work just as well with L2Ks, synths, or whatever other mold system you like to use. Finally, these techniques are not meant to be taken as an authority, an exact recipe, or even what I do for the majority of my casting. I'm merely looking to offer a starting point to get people thinking, talking, and experimenting on their own. That being said, let's get to it. Here we have a stereo bandit that was cast using eight separate shots of resin. Three for the glasses, two for the hat, two for the bandana, one for the lenses, and one for the lenses on the internal. There's quite a few different orders we could do these in, but I like to start with the glasses. For this colorway, the bandit's glasses are just one color, but since the feature covers three different sides of the mold, we'll have to do a separate shot for each one. We'll start with the right side and use a toothpick to place drops of resin in the feature, being careful not to spill over onto the hat or the bandana. We want to make sure this resin is cured enough that it won't flow at all when we rotate the mold for the next shot, so I'll let it cure for anywhere between 30 minutes and a few hours for this particular resin that I'm using. It's probably included in the basics, but I want to be clear that I use a pressure pot for 100% of my casting. For this video, I pressurize at 60 psi for every shot. Shot number two is the other side of the glasses, which will do exactly the same way as the first shot. Flip your mold over, drop in some resin, and let it cure. Next up, we'll shoot the front of the glasses. This area has some tight spaces and I really don't want to overfill, so I'll carefully place some drops in the nose area and let capillary forces pull it through the rest of the feature. I'll also use this shot to cast the glasses on what will eventually be my keycaps internal. I place a large drop on the feature and then gently scrape off any excess using the edge of my toothpick. If I happen to scrape off too much, then I can just add a tiny drop back to even it out. Glasses are looking stylish, so next up is the hat. We'll start with a highlight on the rim and dimple. I'll place one drop of resin on either side of the brim and let gravity pull it down into the mold. For the dimple, I'll place a drop in the center and then draw it up on each side. Once the resin has settled in the brim, I can use a toothpick and surface tension to remove a little bit so the highlight isn't as thick. I'm only going to cure this shot for about 15 minutes as I actually want it to blend in with the next shot we're going to do on the hat. Shot number 5 is the body of the hat which after trial and error, I know sits at an angle of about 17 degrees. You can prop up your molds however you want to do things like this, but I'm a nerd and I laser cut myself some angle wedges. We'll do an early stage marble for this shot as I find it a bit more interesting than a solid color across open areas. By mixing the colors early in their cure cycle, it will let the effects blur together which can be less distracting than the crisper aesthetic of a late stage marble. Mix up your two colors, then pour one into the other and give it a little swizzle. I normally wouldn't use a syringe when marbling, but the hat feature only holds a specific amount of resin and I like them to be consistent. We can cure this shot for as long as we want since it doesn't interact with anything else. For shot number six, we'll break out the paintbrush and do some highlights on the bandana. Gently paint the resin in the mold, being careful not to overspill onto the glasses or the hat.
Once the resin has had a second to sit, you can use the brush to suck some out from any deep spots and or move things around to get patterns that you like. Just like the hat highlight, we'll only let this shot cure for about 15 minutes to let it blend with the next shot. I call this one the body shot because we're finally going to use the bottom mold to fill the remaining volume of the key. And in this case, I'm going to cast it with another early stage marble. Pre-fill your stem, mix up your resin, swizzle them together, then fill the top mold before gently pressing on the bottom mold. Since this is the stem shot, I'll let it cure for a few hours minimum, but usually overnight. Time to demold. Carefully clip your sprues using angle cutters, peel off any flashing, and clean up your molds for next time. For most sculpts you'd be done at this point, but the Stereo Bandit has two features that still need tending to. First, we'll shoot the main lenses. The important things here are not to overspill and to make sure we match the curvature on both lenses. I like to add or subtract resin using a toothpick and then use specular highlights while tilting the cap slowly to match the contours. This is another shot we can cure for as long as we want. The last shot to do is the lenses on the internal. Most people consider these a pretty minor detail, but they make me happy. We'll shoot them the same way as the front lenses, again doing our best to match the contours between the left and right sides. It's worth noting here that because these features are so small, I use a different size toothpick to help prevent overfill. Eight shots later and we're done casting. The last thing to do is clean up the bottoms. My spruce system leaves really small marks, but I'll still wet sand with 800 grit and then clean up again with 2000. Always be careful not to remove too much material when sanding, as this can actually mess up the stem fit and the switch clearance. It's worth noting that you might have gone through all that work to have your caps look pretty bad at the end of it. This could be from laziness, bad luck, or poor design choices, but it's also totally fine because a giant part of casting is experimentation and learning. I encourage you to throw out the bad caps and keep trying until you're genuinely proud of your work. And there you have it. I hope this video gave you some ideas to try in your own casting, or at the very least got you thinking about it. Feel free to discuss in the comments, and give me a follow on Instagram if you'd like to support my own art. I'm the Glyph from GTP Labs, and I'll see you next time.